The biggest insider trading trial on Wall Street in a generation is set to get underway tomorrow. Billionaire Raj Rajaratnam, the founder of the Galleon Group, is scheduled to go on trial to face charges he made $45 million on insider trading. For what to expect, let's bring in Jacob Frankel, a former federal prosecutor and former SEC enforcement attorney. He is now the chair of securities enforcement, white collar crime and government investigations at Shulman Rogers. He joins us now from our Washington bureau. Jacob, welcome back to Bottom Line. Always good to have you on. Thank you. Great to see you, Mark. Uh, Jacob, at, at its heart, it seems that this is about insider trading, but are all of us missing something else? No, this is about insider trading. It's about the government's resolve to tackle insider trading on a large scale. I think what's really significant here is this is not just the biggest, the largest and most significant insider trading case in the past 25 years. It's also the most significant ever in the hedge fund industry. Raj Rajaratnam is a legend in the hedge fund, you know, in the hedge fund business. Mm -hmm. We've got a case in which 26 people have been charged, 19 have pled guilty, and he He's one of the top figures, and now we're going to see a big trial, and it's going to be a brawl. Uh, speaking of brawls, given what you said, that Mr. Roger Rottenham is a legend, how incumbent is it for the federal prosecutors to get a conviction here? It's very important. I mean, we're mindful, not only in every case do, do prosecutors want a conviction, but the last high-profile case the government tried was the Chiaffi Tanin Bear Stearns hedge fund case, and there the, the, the government lost hands down. It was a, it was a straight across the board acquittal, and what's significant here is it's if right, if the government does not win a conviction, for those who are thinking about taking the government to task, going to trial against the government, it will give them considerable resolve, a belief that yes, the government is beatable. You don't do not necessarily have to plead early. Keep in mind, though. Raj Rajaratnam has the, has the treasure chest, has the pocketbook that enables him to have 12 people sitting in the courtroom on his behalf, right. a team behind hooked up by internet. I mean, the, you know, it, but it's this is a, a big case, really, no matter how you look at it for everybody. But in the federal prosecutor's side of things, too, they say they have tapes, they have wiretaps that prove beyond a reasonable doubt his guilt. And, and that's going to be the real challenge is for the defense either to establish that the, the tapes taken in context do not represent what the government holds them out to represent. Or what's going to happen is the government is going to put in such a strong case that it's going to bring about the situation which is the ultimate decision for Mr. Rajaratnam. Does mm -hmm. he testify or does he not testify? You also have the issue here though of the credibility of the witnesses, those who pled guilty. But often when we read the content of the tapes and the indictment, when you start to listen to that language in the actual discussion in terms of what's on tape, right. it's not necessarily exactly as it reads. Uh, Jacob, the stakes are indeed high for federal prosecutors, but are they higher for the financial services industry? They're very high for the financial services industry because anytime you have a high profile prosecution, we're talking criminal cases, it's a black eye for the, for the industry. And what, regardless of whether there is an acquittal or a conviction, right. we've seen that there's been a change in the way business is being done right. and the way people are communicating. And the other issue is the propriety within the industry of right. communicating through these you know, through these non-monitored mechanisms, because the firms do want to monitor their communications. And, and specifically, we're talking, we're talking about expert networks, right? Well, no, actually, I was talking about just communications, whether it be within the broker, yeah. broker dealers, investment advisors. But Mark, you raise an excellent point, which are the expert networks. And I think that's a critical issue here, too, because we're in a day and age where to gain a legitimate advantage in the market, right. market professionals try to get access to better information, to put together the best picture to make the investment decision. And I yeah. really think that's going to be the guts of the defense that Mr. Rajaratnam was accessing information more aggressively than others, but the information that he had somehow was in the public yeah. domain and did not constitute insider trading. All right. Jacob uh, Frankel of Shulman Rogers from Washington joining us. Jacob, always good to have you on. Thanks so much.